All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today, man, we're gonna be talking about Dragon's Dogma 2. And it's honestly unfortunate because really, I wish I could come on here and make a like super positive video talking about this game because in reality, like I'm not even talking in this video too much about the actual game, right? Don't get it wrong. This isn't some sort of game review where I'm coming on here and like reviewing the game itself, but the all around problems with Dragon's Dogma 2 are so bad, are so so inexcusable, I'll even say, right, that, you know, it's something that's got to be talked about. So it seems like the common perspective I've seen with this game so far is kind of that, right? People are like, yeah, the game itself isn't bad. The story, the gameplay, whatever, that part isn't bad. It's the horrific optimization, the ridiculous microtransactions for a single player game, the just other fuck ups surrounding this game. Let's just call it for what it is. The other fuck ups surrounding this game that have now led to this game having a mostly negative Steam review after thousands of reviews. So I also want to point out, it seems like a lot of these issues are happening a lot more on PC. Apparently the console versions, they still have some optimization problems. They're still dealing with some things, but as we've seen with a lot of other games recently, this seems to be more of a PC issue, right? A lot of games now, they launch semi-fine on console because the requirements to, you know, make it work on console are a lot different than on PC. So we've been seeing a lot of games recently launch like playable and you know decent on console but then when it comes to the pc players we always end up seeming to get the bad end of it all when it comes down to it so dragon's dogma 2 this is a game that i and i'm sure you and many other people might have been looking forward to as well uh this was a game that honestly i think a lot of people were hoping we're going to satisfy that rpg itch a little bit right now that's not to act like there haven't been other good rpgs that came out but after baldur's gate 3 and all these other games you know i I feel like people really wanted to sink their teeth into a more narrative themed RPG game. This one's single player too, so it's not, you know, something that you're running through with your friends, right? That's what people were looking forward to. And, you know, the game comes out and it just, uh, well, wouldn't you know. So one of the massive issues with this game so far is just simply performance. I mean, the performance is inexcusable, apparently. And it's to the point where even in like the, the main cities and like the main areas where you go around and do things, people are saying they can't even get this game to run at like 30 to 40 FPS consistently, right? And now me personally, I'm sure a lot of you would agree, right? Like I, I kind of need a game at this point to run 60 FPS to really, I feel like enjoy it as much as I should, but it is actually inexcusable for a game to not even run at 30 FPS. Like it is 2024. I mean, I've been playing 60 FPS games for the better part of at least a decade now. Like if the game is not able to run consistently at 30 to 40 FPS, especially on PC, that is actually pathetic optimization, which seems to be really the main problem here is the game is just poorly optimized which once again seems to be a pretty big trend in modern gaming. It seems like way too many games now, they come out at release and they're not optimized to be played and they run like shit. They don't run at all sometimes. I mean, we've literally seen that happen with new games before. And then of course, it seems like everybody wants to do the about face when like here in Dragon's Dogma 2, the players end up like referring to that as part of their review. Like, yeah, the game barely fucking functions. It doesn't run. There's a lot of glitches going on too outside of the performance issues some people are reporting crashes some people are saying they're having an easier time with it usually when it comes to games kind of performing bad like this when people are talking about crashing and stuff like that not always but usually they're referring to pc like i said the standards are different between console and pc obviously i mean for instance like i got a fucking 4090 in my computer i mean nobody on console is playing with anything that graphic intensive so i get that part but ultimately right like i I just want to point this out too. This is not some fucking $20 video game, okay? This is a AAA title that was published and developed by Capcom. It was released for $70, okay? This is not some little fucking just, oh, haha, -ha, tee hee game, right? This is a AAA title. I mean, you can literally spend $80 on the deluxe edition if you'd like to. But then uh, the other issues start to arise pretty quickly with Dragon's Dogma. Not only is the game performing like shit, crashing for some players, they can't get it to run stably, right? On top of all that, there are some 
pretty insane, ridiculous restrictions in this game that are, it seems to me, done intensively just to sell the goofy microtransactions. And oh, trust me, we'll get into that here in a second. But for instance, you can only create one character in this game, right? So if you're like me and you like to make goofy, silly characters and whatnot for your playthroughs a lot of the time, yeah, well, have fun with that, because if you ever change your mind and you decide, ah, fuck it, I want to do a realistic character, I'd like to maybe make myself in the game or something like that. Yeah, well, this game only allows you to create one player on this game, so have fun with your goofy character. Oh, but, but, but wait, but wait, there, that's not true, actually. If you don't want to wait, you can pay $2 for the character creation microtransaction. Yeah, so you thought I'm trolling or something like that? Nah, man, these microtransactions have really gotten to that point, bro. Now, Capcom in general, they've been known to have some just fucking ridiculous microtransactions and whatnot in their games, but I mean, I would have never have thought that in a single-player $70 RPG that we would be charging people to create new characters might i add it's not like you're you're paying to get like i know some games like this they'll do the oh uh pre-order the game or the deluxe edition or whatever and you can get the the hero's cutting sword or whatever right nah we're not buying any of that shit we're literally paying extra for the right to create a character and if you think that that part is bad the character creator costing extra money uh let's take a look at the full content list for this game now i'm just gonna say before we look at this I, when I first saw this, right, I thought it was a fucking troll. I thought we were all getting pranked. I thought this was some sort of like, you know, ha ha little joke or whatever, because the gaming community has gotten to this point, right? We've gotten to this point where so many different developers and studios, they actually go out of their way to nickel and dime the consumer at any turn. But I mean, this isn't even nickel and diming. This is just like some Mr. Krabs level of greed, but... You can spend $3 on some custom sounds, some camping gear. You know, that sounds kind of normal, right? Or like the 2,500 Rift Crystals or whatever, right? Like, that kind of makes sense. You're selling cosmetics, maybe like an in-game currency or some shit. But then you see some of these like the Wake Stone, Restore the Dead to Life, or the, of course, the Character Editor, or the Makeshift Gal Key, Escape from Gal. And, you know, these are like a dollar, a dollar fifty after tax, whatever. And like I said, I thought this was fake when I first saw this. I had to go to Steam, look the game up, and go through these DLCs to like actually personally confirm that not only were they real, but this is what actually was going on in this game. So, so yeah, if you're thinking what you're thinking already, yeah, you're right. So basically, you know, you can buy for a dollar the ability to raise a dead character to life. So you can basically pay a dollar to revive a character in the game, or you can pay a dollar for a makeshift key that like, say you get locked up or you go to jail or you get held captive or whatever, you can buy this makeshift key to escape, right? So you can pay basically a dollar to get a key that lets you escape these places and whatever. Now keep in mind, after you use them that first time, they fucking break, they disappear. So if you wanna escape five times, guess what? You're buying five keys. So a $70 video game is charging you extra to raise characters from the dead, to escape from places you're locked into, to edit your fucking character or create new ones, right? Now, of course, I, I am obligated, I feel like, to remind you that these are not mandatory purchases. So it's not like if you want to, you know, escape from certain places, you have to pay, right? Like, from my understanding, you can earn these things in the game, right? You can play and get the wake stones, restore people to life, whatever, right? But if you choose to, you can pay extra. And for whatever reason, that's been being used as an excuse by people who like getting cucked by video game developers. But, but, but bro, you don't get it, man. You don't have to pay for these things. They're optional, dude. It's not mandatory. It's cringy, it's predatory, and it's fucking weird. If you're paying $70 for a AAA game, especially, let's just point this out, a single player AAA title, it doesn't matter. There should not be microtransactions. There should not be, hey, pay $2 and you can fucking edit your character, pay an extra buck 50, you can even raise people from the dead, bro. That is not something that should be a fucking thing. Like, people who defend this shit, it's like they've been playing video games for six months of their life, right? Like, I remember as a kid, right, you could play a video game on the PS2, you could play a RPG game, and the idea that you would even pay 
to restore someone to life or edit your character or whatever, right? That that would have been like a fucking a joke. That would have been like some skit you saw on a TV show or something, right? That was not reality. But the gaming industry has brainwashed people so badly that they will vehemently defend paying money to restore people optionally in a fucking single player $70 RPG. Like, do people have no standards anymore? Do you have zero fucking self-respect as a person that you're just willing to allow Capcom to shit in your lap and it's just fine? It's like they're too fucking stupid to realize what's going on here. So if you're too stupid to actually realize why this is a problem beyond the fact that you're too dumb to realize spending 70 fucking dollars should just get you the game experience, these kinds of micro transactions are prodding for the future. So what happens here is the morons, right, who I guess they're too impatient to actually play the single player RPG they paid 70 bucks for. You know, they just want to pay their way through the game that they bought. They're going to buy this shit, right? They're going to buy these fucking character editors, these one use makeshift keys, these fucking wake stones that you can only restore people with once. And they're going to spend $300 to play through a $70 video game because they have no patience, they have no financial sense, whatever it is, right? And then, as a result, Capcom's going to see that and they're going to go, wow, this actually makes us money when we spend, uh, you know, basically no time at all to add 40 DLCs to a $70 video game. It turns out that there are people actually stupid enough to pay for it and they will buy these. So now let's add this to more games. And then all of a sudden you realize, right, that not only only are your $70 single player RPGs now coded in these types of microtransactions. But now virtually every video game is. I mean, we, we've seen it happen, right? It happened with battle passes. It happened with fucking loot boxes. It happened with cosmetics. That's how the industry works. Like if you let one developer or publisher normalize shit like this and it starts making money and really working, then it just sends a signal to everybody else. The next thing you know, next time you're playing a fucking Fallout game, right? You can spend two bucks, right? To Todd Howard to get all of the radiation off your character, right? Then people want to scratch their heads and wonder what the fuck happened. Well, how, how, how do we get here? I don't know, probably because you're paying $2 extra to edit your character in a single player RPG. Like, it, it's it's just stupid, man. It's unfortunate because like, I feel like Dragon's Dogma 2, it could be a good game, right? Like, it could really be something that people enjoy and love and, you know, have plenty of good memories of. But because of the poor optimization, because of the fact that it's not really actually a single player $70 RPG and it's a fucking microtransaction factory and whatnot, right? It just puts a sour taste in my mouth and I'm sure a lot of other people too. I mean, like I said, this game so far on Steam, uh, as of me recording, has like 14,000 total reviews and only like 37% of them are positive and most of it has to do with the microtransactions and the shitty optimization that this game has gone through so far, which is sad because like I said, I feel like this could be a good game, you know, a nice story whatever that people come to enjoy dragon's dogma it's a it's a like a franchise i guess technically that people are happy about like they want to play this they want to enjoy it right the first dragon's dogma is a good memory for a lot of people and i don't know man it's just a shame that this is the state of modern video games now i mean this is the type of shit developers are really focused on doing so anyway with that being said though thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel follow me over on twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. Thank you to my Watch Optimus subscribers. Your support helps the channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, just disappointed, honestly and signing out. And that's a wrap on this video, but big shout out to my Optimus Nation supporters. You guys are the real MVPs. For $10 a month, you get access to loads of exclusive videos and archived live streams, my members only Minecraft server where you can possibly appear in gameplay, early access to all new uploads, an invitation to the private discord, and much more.